Joe Cronin is here to chat about my cover jam with Paulo Rivera for issue six of Batman 89. Uh, so the main idea behind Batman 89, the comic book, is uh, what if Tim Burton and Michael Keaton had gotten to keep going and make uh, and made a third uh, Batman film? What might that be like? So because uh, we were dealing with the concept of uh, this comic book being an adaptation of a movie that never existed, I wanted to really sell that concept by having one of the covers for the book be in the style of a movie poster. And knowing that Paulo had done uh, some work uh, like that and knowing that he um, is uh, such a masterful painter, I pitched the idea early on of uh, the two of us collaborating on a cover to my editor and to Paulo. Uh, and my editor loved the idea and thankfully Paulo was into it and had an opening in his schedule. And so from there, I got to work on uh, concepting a, uh, a cover and, and figuring out a composition for Paula to work uh, on top of. I knew that um, I wanted to have uh, the character of Two-Face be central to the composition for, the, for this quote-unquote poster. <clears throat> I think one of the main uh, reasons for me to, to do uh, this, this story, uh, uh, this arc, of this, uh, you know, theoretical third Batman movie was to see the return of of the character of Harvey Dent that was portrayed by Billy Dee Williams in the original 89 film. And so I, I knew I wanted to have him be central in the composition. And so he he literally is centered in, in all of the sketches. And the the other main notion for, for the concept of, of the cover is to deal with uh, the notion of duality. So um, we sort of have his unblemished light side and and then his blemished uh, uh, villainous side in, in shadow. Uh, and then everything about the composition sort of underscores that. And so on the left side, we have uh, sort of the good characters, quote unquote, uh, Drake Winston, uh, who we introduce in this arc, Barbara Gordon, who we introduce in this arc, and then uh, Batman's cowl literally is is being lit from the left side of the composition. And then on the right side, we have Batman's cowl falling into shadow. We have Catwoman, who is sort of a, she's sort of a, a, a gray character. We don't quite know where she sits. Um, the villainous side of, of Two-Face, and then sort of the, the seedy streets of Gotham. And um, I wanted to show showcase uh, uh, the Batmobile and uh, the Batcycle, mainly because I just wanted, wanted to draw them. But I got to uh, design a Batcycle for the book there, and, and so I thought it'd be fun to showcase it on the cover. Uh, and then further uh, showcasing uh, the duality we have on the bottom of the image, uh, on the one side, uh, the Anton first uh, designed uh, skyline of Gotham City, and on the on the right side we have the uh, a little glimpse of the the uh, neighborhood in Burnside, which is a neighborhood that we introduce in this book, uh, borrowed from the Batgirl comic books, but now folded into the universe of of the uh, eighty nine world. Uh, and then uh, even further driving that home, we have. Uh, Harvey's coin. So Harvey has a, a double-sided coin. Uh, he's marred one side that he and he flips the coin to make all of his decisions. So kind of taking advantage of the language of comic books, we have Harvey with his, with his hand uh, dead center flipping the coin toward the viewer and uh, the a coin sort of getting bigger as it kind of comes toward the viewer. Uh, flipping in one direction, you see the good side, then the other, you see the bad side, and then again, the, that oval morphs into uh, the insignia for Batman's uh, costume. Um, so that's the main concept behind the cover. Um, there's some uh, some other little details that I wanted to throw in there. We, we uh, uh, I, Apollo wanted to have a, a cool guardian, uh, or a cool a gargoyle for for Drake to be uh, sitting atop of. So I referenced. Um, the guardians, I think, from the from a bridge in um, Philadelphia, these these cool uh, these cool sculptures that are there. For Barbara Gordon, I you know obviously she 
is Batgirl in the comics. We we don't see that happen in, in this story, but I wanted to make a little a little winking nod to that. And so she's holding um, a, a bit of evidence that that she's recovered from the police locker in this story. Barbara Gordon's a detective for the GCPD, and so she's holding that suggestively uh, where a bat insignia might be um, on a superhero costume. Uh, so, and then, yeah, playing around with different poses for Batman. We have him uh, with his, uh, in one sketch, I had him with his arms outstretched. One more scene from below. I have one where he's uh, holding his arm in front of his face in sort of like a Dracula pose, which is sort of uh, a, a bit of a nod to Dal Kilmer's pose in the Batman Forever poster, um, which I thought might be fun to, uh, to kind of pay uh, homage to. Um, so that's it. From there, I, I got to, uh, once I settled on the composition, I, I got to work on penciling. I did all my pencils digitally uh, in Procreate. And uh, just kind of going by character, character by character, I, I used a, a reference and then uh, sent off um, those finished pencils to Paulo to paint. So take it away, Paulo. Thank you, Joe. And uh, thank you to Sam Hamm for writing the story, uh, you know, for the comic as well as the uh, original movies that were such a huge influence on, on both me and Joe. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly just about the process that we used to get this done. Uh, Joe sent me the digital file and uh, I just plugged that into Photoshop, printed it out on illustration board, uh, Strathmore series 500, and uh, then just started doing kind of like an underpainting and gouache using both black as well as uh, sepia, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, I can't remember. Uh, once that was done, then uh, I did watercolor, which you can see here. Um, I, I like doing watercolor for the color because it, it doesn't really affect the gouache underneath because I paint the gouache so thinly. And, um, you know, at that point, it's, that, that's kind of like the most fun part of it because the, the hard work of the rendering is already done. And all I have to really do is just put the color where I want. Uh, the tough part about this one was the gradient background, uh, which you kind of already saw uh, prior to this. It just involved a lot of taping, and uh, which is not something I, I typically do, but I got to use the, the latex masking, which is, I think that was the first time I've ever used it. Uh, other than that, man, this is just a, a, a pleasure to work on. I uh, love working with Joe. Joe and I have been friends for over 20 years now. And uh, this, you know, Batman, Batman Returns was just such a huge influence on us. And we're so thankful to be just a, a part of that and, and to continue, um, you know, the, the story. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, I also hope that you'll pick up the book. Uh, the, the hardcover collection is out. It collects issues one through six. And uh, I highly recommend it, even if I didn't have any artwork. It was a part of it. Uh, thanks for watching.